Here's a list of problems that are from that worksheet that I thought were kind of like the ones on the uh, on the test. And again, I read off the other ones that were not going to be on there and ones that I already covered in um, the third period class. So go back and watch the third period video um, to find the ones that I didn't hit today. All right. So let's do uh, number 12. Let's start off with number 12 right now. Flip this thing over. Okay, let me draw this out. Okay, I've got two triangles right here. It says they're similar to each other on the test and on, on this worksheet. It says they're similar to each other, but it also says that this line right here and this line right here are medians. What does it mean to be a median? It goes from here and it hits where? Right, at the, let's not, not say middle, let's say what? At the midpoint, right. So that's a midpoint right there. So that means these two segments are equal to each other, correct? And it means that these two segments are equal to each other. That means it's a median. Got it? On the test, I don't say it's a median, but I do mark it like this. All right, I mark these two and these two equal to each other as such. All right, so that's 11. This is 4.4. .4. This is 3.8, this little median right there. Okay, that's this line right here. And the question says find BM, which is this. I'll just call it X instead of using all those letters. All right, so you'll see one very similar to this, very close to this um, on the test. It's just written just a little bit differently, that's all. Um, so what do we do? We have a rule that says this. The medians are in proportion or, yeah, they're in proportion with the corresponding sides of the triangle. So what in the world does that mean? It means if I compare the medians to each other. So how do I compare the medians to each other? When I say compare them to each other, how do I write that, Anthony? Okay, yeah, I, I mean, you could write 3.8 over x, but I kind of like to go from the left one to the right one or at least put the x on the top. So I'm going to go compare x to 3.8. I'm going to set it equal to, okay, we do this. Almost this whole entire test is doing this kind of stuff, setting a fraction equal to another fraction. I mean, that's the majority of this test, isn't it, setting up those proportions? So if I go x to 3.8, what do you think I'm going to do with those other two sides? 11 to 4.4, that's right, 11 to 4.4. You get used to setting up stuff like this, you can do almost the whole entire test. All right, it's all very, very close to this. And now you just solve for x. So we solve for x by cross-multiplying. All right, so let's do that. 4.4x equals 3.8 times 11. Divide both sides by 4.4. Okay, that gets rid of that. And I'm just going to put that in a calculator. And let's see what I get. I get 3.8 times 11. And I divide that by 4.4. And I get 9.5, 9 and a half. That's what I read off, right? 9 and a half? Yep. Yeah. So there you go. That's what that segment is right there. I mean, if you get the idea of doing it like this, I mean, almost all the problems, you're going to do the same kind of thing. You're always setting a proportion, setting a ratio equal to another ratio, cross multiplying and solving for x, right? I mean, that's basically what it boils down to. All right, so that's an important problem right there. I think that's really important to know how to do that because so many of the other problems are very, very close to that kind of thing. <clears throat> we good with that? All right. Um, that was 12. Let's do 13. Let's go a different color here. All right, 13. This one says, now I kind of did a little bit of this um, in the third period class, so if you want to look at that, you can. So number 13 says the ratio of the measures of three sides of a triangle is 3 to 4 to 6. These are three sides of a triangle. Okay, is 3 to 4 to 6, right? 3 to 4 to 6. Does that mean that one of the sides is exactly 3, 3 inches, 3 feet, whatever? The other one is exactly 4, exactly 6? No. It means for every three you go on this side, you go four on this side, and you go six on this side. That means that this side right here is twice as big as this side, right? Do you agree? All right, what else does it tell you? It says the perimeter is 91. The perimeter equals 91. Now, why in the world do we care about the perimeter? Because these are my three sides. This is the ratio of the three sides, okay? It's not necessarily three, because look, if I add these three sides up, does that add up to 91? Of course not. Okay, so what am I going to have to do to this? Do you remember what we do? 3 what? 3x. 3x, good. Plus 4x, plus 6x, 
and that equals what? 91. I had a couple people do this on the quiz. You had one like this on the quiz, didn't you? And I had a couple people put equals 180. This is not the angles of a triangle. It's what? They're the sides of the triangle, and the sides add up to be 91. Don't set these equal to 180. That would mean the angles, right? That would all three angles. These are not angles. These are sides of a triangle. You have to read the problem. Now I'm going to tell you this. Got a couple people with their heads down. I really appreciate it if you had your heads up. Thank you. I'll tell you this, that you have a problem that is just like this. All right, the numbers are different, but the problem is very, very close to this. They tell you the perimeter. They tell you the ratio of the three sides. You add them up, and you set them equal to 91. You solve for x, and you go from there, okay? Then I also have another one where I said the three angles of a triangle are in this ratio of whatever, 3 to 4 to 6. What would you do there? Would you set it equal to 91 again? Then you would set it equal to 180, okay, if it said angles. I give you one type like this, and then one type where you set them equal to 180. Everybody hear me on that? I mean, I'm giving away. I'm giving away those two problems to you, okay? Except I'm not just telling you the exact numbers, but it, I'm showing you how to do it. So you have one problem like this, and then you have another problem where you have to set it equal to 180. And that's when they say it's the three angles of a triangle have a ratio of 3 to 4 to 6. Everybody paying attention? Everybody listening to what I'm saying? Okay, because sometimes it looks like you're paying attention to what I'm saying, but nothing's getting through. So I'm hoping I'm getting through to you. Let's continue with this problem. What do we do here? Let's just add them up. 3 and 4 is 7, and 6 is 13. 13x equals 91. Divide both sides by 13. And x equals, what's that, like 7 or something like that? Is that what it is? Yeah, let me just do it. 91 divided by 13. Yep, 7. All right. Is that my answer, though? Just x equals 7? No. If you look at number, look at what it says, it says find the length of the longest side. Find the length of the longest side. Now, I think on the test, I actually ask you to find the lengths of all three sides, like I did on the quiz. So let's, let's change this problem around a little bit and say find the length of all three sides. So what would you do here? If x is 7, this is the length of one side, the length of the second side, and the length of the third side. So you go... Yeah, 3 times 7, you go what? 4 times 7, and then you go 6 times 7. All right, that's 21. 7 fours are 28. 6 sevens are 42. And that would be your answer. Now, the question that they said was, what's the longest side? So obviously, the longest one is 42, all right? Make sense? I'm not going to do the other one because we did it in third period, but we did another one where we did it with 180 degrees, all right? So... You can look at that if you really need to, but it's really no different than this, except they don't give you a perimeter. They don't. They, all they do is tell you the ratio of the three angles. Okay, you go times x times x times x equal 180. Add them up, solve for x, plug it back in, and go from there. All right. Okay. What else was there? That was 13, 15, and 16. All right, let's change colors again. 15. Let's take a look at that. All right, let's draw a triangle. Let's see what we can do here. So they give you this one big old triangle. Like this. And this one says that AX bisects angle B, uh, BAC. All right, so what they tell you is this. They tell you that this angle and this angle are equal to each other. All right? This is 6. This is 8. This is 2x. And this is 4x minus 5. This is really, really close to this, except look what we're comparing. We were comparing two triangles, weren't we? We were comparing one side of one triangle to one side of the other triangle. Okay, there are two separate triangles. Right here, we're just comparing... Uh, segments in one big triangle okay so it's a little bit different but the ratios the proportions are all the same now we have something that says that it, just like that one with the median okay this is this comes from the same lesson this is an angle bisector so what do you think we're gonna do here we're gonna make some comparisons let's take six what are you gonna compare six to let's compare six to this 4x minus 5 okay 
See that? I compare this one to this one. So what do you think I'm going to do down here? 8 to 2x. Good. All right. You could go 6 to 8 and 4x minus 5 to 2x, okay? I don't know. I just decided to go from here to here. All right? Because, look, they're the ones that do connect right there, and these two connect right here. I don't know. So to me, it just kind of made sense to connect to compare them like that. So let's do that. 6 over 4x minus 5. That's going to equal, and if I went from here to here, what do I do here? 8 to 2x. And that's all the geometry. All the rest of it is just doing a little bit of work. All right, so let's do this. Let's cross multiply. 6 times 2x is 12x. And then let's do this. Now, what are we going to have to do here? This is a little bit different. 8 times this. What have I been saying the last few days? What do I do to this 4x minus 5? Distribute it or put it in parentheses before we distribute it, okay? I always put it in parentheses first, then we'll distribute it. Let me just write it right here so that you can see it and you don't forget to distribute. But you're exactly right. You do distribute the 8 through both of these. Everybody see that? I think that's very important. Are you guys doing that or not? Okay, good. All right, and I think that really can help you. So let's go ahead and distribute now. So 8 fours are what? What are 8 fours? 32. <laughs> Drew a blank there. Uh, minus, what, 40? Okay. And then we could do this a couple ways, but I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to put the x on the right-hand side. Is that all right? Subtract a 12x from both sides. All right. And then add a 40 to both sides. Add a 40. And that cancels. That cancels. I get 40 equals 32 minus 12 is what, 20? X, am I right? Yep. Divide by 20. X is 2. And is that all they ask for in that problem? Yep. It just says find the value of X. Now, make sure you read the problem carefully because what else do you think they could ask for? Let's put some letters in here. B, X, C, and A. What do you think they could ask for? Now, we found what X was. What did we say it was? 2? All right. But what, do you, what else do you think they could possibly ask? Because they might ask that on the test. I don't know. What do you think? Okay, yeah, they could ask what XC is. Exactly. And um, what if they say, find XC, find line segment XC? What would you do? Plug it in. Good. 2 times 2 is 4. Or they could ask for what? BX. They could ask for BX. So you plug that in. 4 times 2 is 8 minus 5 is 3. Or they could ask for, you said it, they could ask for BC, couldn't they? All right, so you find both of these. What would BC be equal to? What is it? Come on. Yeah, 7. Not that hard. Okay, this is 3 and this is 4, so the whole thing is 7, right? So they could ask for those different things. Or they might just say solve for X. In this particular problem on the worksheet, they just say solve for X. But make sure, listen, I'm giving you huge hints here, and you don't, realize it. I really don't think. Make sure that you read the question carefully. Okay, if it says solve for x, then stop right there. If it says find the length of bc, make sure you take what x is and you plug it in and you find what bc is equal to. That's a big problem that students have doing this stuff. Is they You, you just are real quick. You see the problem, you think, oh, I'm just going to solve for x. But what if they don't ask you for x? What if they ask you for xc or bx or bc? then you're going to have to plug it back in. Make sure that you do that. I'm trying to help you out here. I really am. By the looks on your faces, it looks like I'm torturing you. Is it really that bad? You don't know how bad it is until you go to college and you get some of these 80-year-old professors and they just, you can barely hear them and they're talking. They're like, uh, okay, now you do this. I mean, I'm telling you, you're going to have professors like that. You're going to look back. In fact, I met a kid Saturday. I came over here to shoot, um, shoot soccer, right? And I told you yesterday, did I tell you yesterday? Took my first picture and um, there was no card in my camera. <laughs> so I came all the way out here on a Saturday to shoot girls soccer and I didn't bring the card in my camera. So that was pretty stupid. But one thing that was nice, I met the, I got to meet, I probably met like seven or eight former Newcastle students that I taught at Newcastle that, that all had their kids playing Bear Babe Ruth from like real little ones, t-ball kids to one kid that was like 11 or 12 or something like that. And um, it was really cool. I got to, 
talk to him. I talked to this one kid, Dante Gabrielli. You know the Gabriellis? Anybody know them? Remember uh, Angelina Gabrielli? She was in the same class as your sister, I think. Yeah. Um, anyway. I talked to Dante, who I taught, and who went to Delaware, who's now an engineer and stuff. And I, we were just talking and about the old days at school and stuff. And I was like, man, Dante, these kids think I'm like the worst, most boring teacher in the world. I just see it in their eyes. I'm like, I don't know what else to do. Um, he, he's like, that's all right, Mr. Henry. He says, they, don't, they just don't know. They don't appreciate what they have now because when they go to college and they hear some of these professors in college just drone on and on and just not have any life to them whatsoever, they're really going to appreciate what they had in high school. I'm like, well, I wish they would appreciate it now. And, um, but I don't know, maybe some of you guys do, but you will, I promise you're going to come back and you're going to say, Oh, Mr. Hammer, I had this teacher, you know, I thought you were boring in high school. This guy is like a hundred times boring than you, more boring than you. So anyway, I started him. All right, let's do another one. What was anybody write down that list? I forget which one we have to do now. Did we just do 15? Okay. 16 and we'll do a mid segment problem, right? All right. So let's do 16. Is that what I said? Okay. <laughs> 16, where are we? Okay, let's do that one. Um, there we go. And we've got one about like there. And let's put some stuff in. That's a Y, and that's a 4. This is an 18, and this is going to look really familiar. We've done like two problems that are almost identical to this, all right? We just set up some ratios, and it says find what y is in order to make this parallel to this, all right? I think on the test, I just probably tell you that they're already parallel, all right? So let's say they're parallel to each other, and I'm going to solve for y. Um, so what can we do? Look, i got parallel lines, and it cuts this side into these two segments. This parallel line cuts this side into two different segments. This is a 4. Kind of looks like a Y, doesn't it? That's a 4. All right. And so we need to set up some kind of a some kind of a ratio, don't you? Don't you think? So what are we going to do? Let's do Y first. Let's compare Y to something. What do you want to compare Y to? There's a couple options on this. Yeah, let's go Y to 4. Okay, that's what I'll do. Okay? Compare Y to 4. So if I compare Y to 4, what else what other comparison? Georgia, what am I going to have to do? 18 to 8y. That's right. So compare this to this. Everybody see that? Yeah, nice and easy, right? I think so. y over 4 equals 18 over 8y. And then we cross multiply. Oh, you're going to get a y squared here, aren't you? So watch this. I get a or 8y squared equals uh, 18 times 4, right? Divide both sides by 8. I don't think I give you one with a squared on the test, but let's just do this anyway. We'll see how to do this. So uh, I uh, let's do, do it like this. Watch. Um, 4 goes into 8, doesn't it? So 4 goes into 4 once. It goes into 8 how many times? Twice. And then 2 goes into 18. 2 goes into 2 once. goes into 18 9 times. So y squared equals 9. What's y going to be, though? If y squared is 9, how do we get rid of that squared? Take the square root. Good. And what's the square root of 9? It's 3. So y is equal to 3. All right. If that's what they ask for. Is that what they say? Yep. It says find the value of y, and that's what it would be. But again, what could they ask for? They could ask for this segment right here. That's an n, and that's a c. They could say find nc. What would you do? You'd plug it into this, right? Right. 8 times 3 is 24. Or they could ask for... AC, right? 24 and 4 is 28. They could ask for all kinds of different things. Make sure you read the problem and just solve for what they ask you to solve for. Okay, now we're going to do a mid-segment problem, correct? And I'll tell you what. Let me find a mid-segment problem. Any idea what lesson that was from? Mid-segment. Where are you? Ah, here we go. Like 7-4, I think. Section 7-4. Yeah, and you will have a couple problems like this. So this is a good one to go over because we will have a problem that looks really, really close to this. Let's go tan this time. Um, let's draw the triangle. 
looks like this, looks like this. And I think these mid segments are some of the easier ones that you're going to do. As long as you understand what a mid segment is and what the relationship is. What do you think a mid segment does? It connects the what? What's in that word? Mid what? Midpoints, right. It's a segment that connects the midpoints. You've said that many, many times, We're talking about this mid segment. All right, and it's pretty close. <laughs> Didn't have my dots exact, but you get the idea. All right, so that thing right there connects the midpoint of those two sides. And um, actually, they do a couple midpoints here just to kind of trick you up a little bit, I think. I put a midpoint right here. And let's connect from here to here. So I actually have two mid segments, don't I? I got one connecting these two sides, and I've got one connecting these two sides right here. So I actually have two mid segments. Now look what they tell you. They tell you this whole thing right here is 30, and they ask you just to solve for x. And this is x right there. It couldn't be any easier. I really couldn't. Look at it. This is the mid segment. So what do we know about the mid segment? There was a little thing. There were two things actually. One that the two sides were parallel. Okay, this mid segment and the other side. Do you see how it's connecting these two sides right here? It's the third side. This is parallel to the third side, but it's also what? What about the length of it? It's half. This mid segment is exactly half the third side. Okay? So if the third side is 30, what's x equal to then? 15, right. It's just 30 divided by 2. It's half of 30, which is just 15. It's as easy as that. Mid-segments mid are a piece of cake, aren't they? Nah, on the test, I'm looking at the test. It looks just like that. Yep, I'm looking at the test, and it looks just like that. Well, there is one that's a little trickier, and I don't want to give it away. I want you to have to think a little bit. But there's three problems with mid-segment. Two of them are almost identical to this. Okay? And then the third one's a little bit tricky. I'll give you a little bit of a hint. I don't want to completely give it away. If this whole thing is 30, I'll call this A and B. What would A be equal to? 15. And what would B be equal to? Why? Because this connected the midpoint, didn't it? So this A and this B must be the same thing. They add up to 30. They both got to be 15. Agree? That's all the hint I'm going to give you. It's all, it's all you need. All right, so you do have one problem where you, ha you do have to realize that. It's really not that hard, is it? Okay, really not. I think we pretty much covered everything. Let me just kind of go through this test one more time. I'll give you another hint. Let's, let's go to that one where we had that one, this one right here. Let's get rid of a lot of this junk here. Oops. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of all this. Let's get rid of that line right there. Get rid of all the stuff that's in the way. Okay. So don't worry about any of these numbers. None of these numbers is on the scene. Okay, good. And I will keep those numbers right there. Uh, let me. I'm trying to. Give you an idea what this is like on the test without completely giving you the exact same numbers. Okay, what if they told you... What did we say that side was, anyway, when we plugged all the numbers in? Does anybody remember? Did you write that down? What was the whole thing? The whole the whole side was 7? Okay. So that whole side, right? <laughs> it's weird looking. That whole side was 7, right? And what if I asked for that? Would you be able to solve this this is a little bit trickier solving for a that little a right there no because this doesn't doesn't hit the midpoint right I didn't say that this was a a median or anything like that okay it bisects this angle so it doesn't mean that it hits right in the middle how in the world would I find that well I could do a ratio so but here's the problem I'm going to compare 6 to what? How did we do it earlier? 6 to A, right? But then I have to compare 8 to what? To 7? Very good. Very good. Okay, she, she got it. Watch. What's XC? I didn't tell you what XC was, did I? But I know the whole thing is 7. I know this little bit is A. So what is this right here? 
It's 7 minus A, isn't it? That's why I gave it to you. I mean, what if what if this was 3? Because that's what it was, wasn't it, in the original problem that we did? Wasn't it 3? Look at it. What was BX? BX. I mean, but what did we get? We actually did the problem. We plugged back in. Did you write any of that down? It was 3? Okay. So that's what I thought. What if I told you this was 3? How would you solve for XC? 7 minus 3, right? Carl, you said you would have never got this, but watch. If I would have told you this was 3 and I said solve for XC, would you be able to get it then? If I told you this was 3? Yeah, because it's the whole thing, 7 minus 3. But... Let's say I didn't give you the whole thing. What if I just said it's some unknown? It's A. Well, how do you get XC? You get it the same way, don't you? It's 7 minus A. Now, how would you set this up? You go 6 over what? A equals what? 8 over 7 minus A. Cross multiply, and I'll let you do the rest. Sure. Yeah, if I cross multiply here, you got to distribute just like we always do. I'm not going to do the math for you. You can do that on your own. All right. I think we covered this test up and down. All right. I don't think any other day of review is going to help you any more than what we did today. I really don't. All right. So you should be ready. So we're going to take the test tomorrow. And um, so please be ready for it. It's not like you got to spend hours and hours studying this stuff. But you should go over some things, though. All right. Watch this review again. In fact, you already saw this in class, so why bother watching this again if you had your head up and if you were paying attention, which is a big if, okay? Probably about 70% of you actually were watching and paying attention, 30% just sitting there with their head on their table. So you may want to watch both of them. But for you guys that were paying attention and watching what we were doing today, you may want to go to the third period class review, okay? Watch that video. Because we hit problems in that third period class that we didn't hit in here, and that might help you out. All right? So I'm not even going to – I was thought about asking who's going to do that, but it's going to make me mad because nobody's going to raise their hand. Or even if you do, you probably won't watch anyway. So I'll just believe. I'll just live in my little fantasy world and think that you guys are actually caring about it and are actually going to go to the YouTube page and watch the video from third period. <laughs> okay, so let me live in my little fantasy world. All right, so um, – so it would be a good idea, I tell you, it would be a good idea if you did that because it's really going to help you out. Okay, enough of that. Test tomorrow, be ready for it.